So preservation sounds like to, to you it's an integrated approach of having having really the right financial uh, tools available. Absolutely. The right partners absolutely. working on the project, the right leadership at the local level, yeah. and and uh, obviously a great building stock to work with. Right. Uh, but then uh, coming out with something that can also be you know be very uh, very much about economic development and about conservation mindedness because historic preservation, as we like to say, it is uh, the greenest building is the one already built. It is absolutely, and it also you know lower town just as small community already generated a billion dollars investment and now we are connecting the two downtown and the the light rail will be you know be or mm -hmm. will be reaching the union depot in in lower town so you know that's another billion so in, in any in any way preservation not only can be an economic uh, generator but actually could create more jobs than new construction in many ways. And also preservation, older building has thicker wall. It actually is, uh, you know, really save a lot of energy. Right. It's more thermodynamic. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So these things, if you add new dimensions, solar and other to it, green roof and all those things, you can make it really facing the future. And this is, to me, it, this is the way to build a future, build a green village, so to speak. So a future out of the past. Yeah. We like the sound of that. Yeah. So the, I wanted to thank you uh, for um, for the impact that you helped us to make uh, in creating jobs because Wei Ming was an integral part of our effort to pass a state historic tax credit and uh, the state of Minnesota, which was completed in 2010, and making the case out of the successes in Lower Town. Well, thanks to your leadership there, too. Uh, there and so everybody people, else out there. <laughs> it makes a lot of different yeah. preservation lines. It's so important to our state. We're lucky to have your leadership and many other. I think that we need to continue to push this movement to, uh, to, to build a very different Minnesota. Well, that's it. That leads into an, uh, an excellent question, which uh, you know, I've, I've been, been eager to ask, and that is it, both, both, uh, both you and I are, are individuals. We're, we're just one citizen who have, uh, have really advocated for and tried to, tried to make a difference in uh, saving places that are important to not only to us, but to other people in the, in the state. What? What role do individuals play in preservation? If, if we need all of those things to be present, the economics, the leadership, the partners, what, what role do individuals out there play in helping to make this I, success? I think individual is very important in a democratic country like America. I think that you know, as a new American, you know, I, I, I have seen the, the, the privilege of being American here. I think each one can sp we can speak up, we can get engaged, we can look at things, we can support action, uh, we can you know write to our legislators and others, and we can see if we have enlightened leaders uh, in office. We need to support them. Oh, yeah, so we need to provide time. some uh, support individually. We can set up donor advising fund or whatever. Mm -hmm. We can support legislation. So that we can also see the benefit and reinforce it, mm -hmm. and share these uh, experience with others, and then I think we can continue to move in America uh, toward the future and continue to be the innovative, uh, kind of caring, uh, the kind of uh, uh, community uh, country in the world. So looking back yeah. at what the preservation movement was like in 1961. Uh, comparing it to today, what were the advocates, what, what was that advocacy effort like um, to save the Metropolitan Building, for example, compared to today? Since we're, since we're commemorating the, the 50th anniversary of this, of this very devastating loss, uh, what did those folks try to do and, and what's different today? How would we be successful? I think, you know, you cannot take anything for granted. So whatever you might be successful now in Lost Loop and so forth, uh, you enjoy seeing a little bit 
progress in lower time, but you cannot just take anything for granted. You have to continue to watch, continue to push, and so that not to make a mistake and destroy the past and what has been accomplished. And you need to continue to look ahead at the future and learn from the past. We cannot, the past can give us some experience to share, I think, that we can face the future better so that we will not, we learn from the past success as well as failure, mm -hmm. so that we will not repeat the past failure, but rather to learn how to really uh, be more successful in the future in every step we take and continue to, to, to move ahead, I hope, yeah. Do you see that a having a, having an advocacy organization, advocacy and education organization like the Preservation Alliance, has helped that movement forward? It's absolutely important. It's critical. Without that, it's you know you, you need to have people watching it and able to have the knowledge like you and other have to share, and so that uh, laymen uh, could could also understand and then participate more actively. And then we can bring some fruit. And you just can't do it alone. You, you do need the knowledge, you need the experience, and you need the collaborative effort, and you need all the different disciplines come together. And then I think we will be building a better and better city, build a better community, I think. So then I need to be fully transparent to our viewers that both you and I are members of the Preservation Alliance in Minnesota, and so we have a vested interest in talking about why it's great. Uh, so, but honest, being, you know, just, just complete honesty and transparency, why are you a member of the Preservation Alliance in Minnesota? Well, I do think I've seen the work you have done, uh, like the tax credit and other things, and helping so many communities around the state on so many different things. Uh, you know, from the big, beginning of the year to the end of the year. It's just incredible. I don't know how you manage. Uh, to, <laughs> to, to, no, to we have great so, members like you to help I, I us. I <laughs> believe in how you do it, manage. And it, it's take a lot of dedication and belief. And, and uh, otherwise you won't be, no one will be doing this. I think that if anybody get engaged will discover. I don't need to tell them. Uh, they will discover themselves even more than I do. Uh, I think that you know you just you just cannot believe. You know if we did not have those preservation movements. Those warehouses will still leave empty and could be demolished already. Mm -hmm. Again, repeating the same mistake we made here for the Metropolitan Building. And uh, who can assure us those buildings will be safe and being enjoyed by thousands of people? And uh, I do think I do think the Preservation Alliance deserves attention, deserves support by from everyone. You heard it here. We Ming is asking you to support us. Yeah, so absolutely. we're going to take his advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think my last question is yes. just to really something for fun. Because yeah. I think we all need to ask ourselves why, you know, why we're doing this. What's your favorite what's your favorite historic place? Well, I have I must say some of them really impact me when, when I one year I went to Poland and uh, visited U.S.-Polish uh, symposium, and I visited Krakow. Uh, I was so impressed by that historic city. So beautiful. It was a, so you were in Krakow for Krakow. the U United States-Polish symposium. symposium yeah, this, and was, this was even during the Solidarity Movement time. Mm. It was a tough time. But I was, I was so impressed. I came back and wrote, wrote three articles about that uh, visit. It was 74, 81, I went there. The other thing that impressed me was like, you know, went to Kyoto 
in Japan. And when I was visiting professor for Tokyo University, you know, that historic city, how that is, uh, is very impressive too. And, and um, I like London, I like Copenhagen as well. I think like these cities, each of them have their own character. Then, of course, when I go back to China these days, I'm uh, very concerned about the rapid development and how mm -hmm. destructive sometimes they are, uh, even though enlightened uh, their leader uh, pointed out. Uh, you know, when I went back to for the Olympic, then I, that was one of the things I really... In Beijing, the Olympics in Beijing, in Beijing? I spoke for the need to preserve and I gave a lecture on Sansui City, talk about the Chinese as a long tradition, thousand years of tradition of building city, uh, of, uh, of have that kind of heritage of, of preserving the, the nature, preserving the, the, the historic culture, mm -hmm. and the need to do that. Anyway, yeah. Well, thank you. You've, yeah, I think you've contributed that cultural awareness of preservation and of placemaking here in the United States. I just wanted to thank you again, Wei Ming, for being our first Perspectives on Preservation, and uh, we really appreciate your time and your effort to preserve historic places in Minnesota. Not at all. We never do it alone. All of the, all of you together. We, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're doing it together. Yeah. Well, thank you. I would also like to thank Will O'Keefe and Sean Kittredge, our social media intern, for their excellent media taping today and uh, trying to make us look uh, good and salient in our points. So I want to thank them very much. I would like to um, just to remind you that if you're intrigued about the Metropolitan Building and would like to learn more, you can visit our website at mnpreservation.org to find resources about it, to find pictures, uh, some video, as well as other efforts to try to save the remnants of the Metropolitan Building. Uh, its, uh, its stone was taken out to a landfill in Delano, and, uh, and some of it has been brought back. So you can read more about that uh, at the, the Ice House development in Minneapolis. Yeah. We'd also, like a TPT pledge drive, like to remind you that you can support the Preservation Alliance in Minnesota by joining us as a member, just like Wei Ming has asked you to do and uh, encouraged you to do. You can go to our website at mnpreservation.org and click on the Join button. You can join for as little as $3.33 per month. So give up that cup of coffee for just a couple of days and make an effort, make a difference in helping us to protect the historic resources that you care about. So thank you very much for your support and uh, we hope you enjoyed watching.